can explain that way better than I do. Yeah. Thanks again, Detlef. Yeah. Uh, the no problem, problem I had was uh, the internet in the Goethe Institute in the Windhoek is not as good as it should be, but nevertheless, we will try to do our best. Okay. Okay. We will, let, we will let me start improve. with the project. I would like to show some of the applications we did during the last few years here in Namibia and also some of that what we did in Germany. So that is always an international collaboration. And that is very important for computer science that there is international corporations and also multidisciplinary cooperation. And if you think augmented reality is a new thing, then you are more or less wrong. If you go back 120 years, there's a nice, um, there's a nice book from Frank Baum, The Key Master. And the nice title, the subtitle is An Electrical Fairy Tale. So, and you see on the left hand side is a book 20, 120 years ago. And on the right hand side is a brand new electronic device we have since, let's say, two, three years. So that means he did the forecast what should be in reality in 100 plus years really nice and especially about uh, that smart glass he wrote uh, yes i give you uh, as a nice present and character matter it consists of a pair of spectacles and what you can do looks through the smart glass and look to a person. And if you look to Max, then you say, yes, that is a strong boy. And you have the character S. If you look to Katarina, then you have an I, like an intelligent girl. Or if you look uh, to Elizabeth, then you see um, an S like smart. If you look to that left, then you can see LV librarian and so on. So that means you will have different characters to give some secrets of his, uh, yeah, of his brain, of his uh, status and so on. But he says also, but, yeah, that is an, could be a very dangerous gift. You should think about, better think about it twice. Who would you like to give him? The power should be used very wisely in the interest of science, in the interest of mankind. So that means that when you do computer science, when you do some engineering, now normally two different sides of the idea, a bad one and a good one. And for us as scientists, we sh should take care on the good one and show that you can do something wrong with that. And we should announce, please do not do that. So again, augmented reality. What you should do in augmented reality is give an idea what it is and how to put it in the field of science. If you look to the slides, then you have on the left-hand side a real building like the Goethe Institute here, the University of Science and Technology in Windhoek. And if you have a look to the right-hand side, that's a virtual environment that is virtual. Everything is digital. Everything is computer generated. And in the middle, we have augmented reality. So that means the basic is the reality and you put it on some digital information. The digital 
the device is. More to the direction of virtual reality, you have augmented reality. Then the computer generated part is in the majority and you put some real things. For example, in a test and computer in the middle augmented virtual uh, augmented reality and augmented virtuality is together the uh, mixed reality. So, and if you look back to some of the history, then you see around 60 years ago, uh, even Sutherland uh, designed the first head-mounted display around 60 years ago. If you go back 25 years, then you have the first mobile augmented reality system. The laptop in the backpack, some head-mounted display, uh, some mobile keyboard, and so on. And really interesting for us, it was the introduction of a smartphone. The first one of that category was an iPhone. And from my point of view, it should be an iPhone 3G. So that means you have augmented reality in your pocket, in your hand, and you can do fantastic things with that. So let's have a look what we did with such things. We start in Berlin. And uh, of course, that is where I have my professorship at the University of Applied Science. And we uh, have a cooperation with the well-known Pergamon Museum, with the Museum of Islamic Art in the Pergamon Museum. And we played a little bit uh, with the 1,000-year-old book of Shahnameh uh, of the Persian kings. So, and then we have digital storytellers that are the cones, the blue cones on the right hand side. And you and there's a little sensor with the uh, symbol on the right hand side of the bookmark. That is the magic part of the bookmark. So something around, you have some little tiny computers with RFID readers on the right-hand side. Then you have uh, in Jewish Museum or in the Pergamon Museum, uh, you have a server and then you do a synchronization with your computer. And then uh, you can have all the information you collected with the smartphone. And that is, for example, the Shachname, we collected six different uh, stories from the storyteller. Uh, one is about the flying, the flying machine, machine, and you can listen to that. The period of okay, I guess you catch the idea. The that is here more or less that what we uh, selected as digital information, you can uh, have as an add-on to the uh, different uh, bookmarks, you take home some additional digital information. In our case, these are stories. So once again, next application is in the concert hall in Berlin and the Gendarmarkt for me, one of the nicest places. So uh, we would like to bring life in that building. And life in that building means we should have musicians, but the musicians are not able to play 24 hours a day. That's why we have to do some digital uh, production, some digital application to play with that. And we developed a lot. I would like to show you only one application that is the virtual quartet. And the virtual quartet, uh, the developer of that was Elizabeth, 
and I will hand over the computer to Elizabeth. She should describe what is uh, uh, the best thing in it, how to develop that, and how to use that. Elizabeth, your job. Thank you, Jürgen. Uh, yeah, the virtual quartet is one of the applications that we did in cooperation with the concert hall in Berlin. And the name basically says what it is. So the name can be read in two different ways because for once uh, a quartet is um, an allocation of four musicians. So this is where two violins, a viola and a cello play together in the concert hall. But quartet is also the name of a playing card game that you might remember from your childhood. And yeah, the application is a mix of the two. So you have four playing cards, which you can see in the upper right corner. And if you use your smartphone and scan one of these markers, then one of the musicians from a, a concert house quartet will appear on them. And the cool thing is that um, all of them were recorded separately, which means that you can either use one or two cards or use all of the cards together and create your own virtual orchestra, so to say. Yeah, it uses augmented reality and we will have a short introduction of how it works. First of all, we have to look at the content production. So we have audio and video. Um, the audio, as I said, was recorded separately. And for that, they used an anechoic chamber. You can see a picture of that in the bottom right. Uh, the walls look very funky, but the walls look like that so that um, if you record music in this room, there will be no echo. And uh, that's important in order to have very clean audio files. And as for the video, the musicians were recorded in front of the green screen, which you can see in the middle. And again, they all had to play separately, which is uh, quite a challenge for the musicians because they are used to playing together. And they, they told us that every time they play, it's not the same as the last time because they act on visual cues and play together mostly. And yeah, for augmented reality, we use the Vuforia SDK framework and yeah, that um, takes care of the marker recognition. So every time a marker is shown in the camera view, then uh, Vuforia SDK searches the camera view for uh, little features and matches them to the markers in the database. And here you can see a little snippet of code. Um, it is very <laughs> plain code, but I can explain it because um, the most important part of that is the synchronization. So because we have uh, video that is played and we have four audio sources uh, placed in our program and um, it would not make any sense if they weren't synchronized because that would not, not look very good. So in order to take care of this, we have combined the four audios, uh, the four videos into one global video, which you can see on the right. And you can see the four musicians and four shapes in red that is used because green screen I think we lost Elizabeth a little bit. I hope that will be sorted out soon. Um, I'm not sure if um, Sophie Schauer can take over. Let's see. I still ask for the for the mic. Sophie Shawa, can you unmute your phone? So I see Mr. Jürgen disconnected, so he will rejoin again. <clears throat> Okay, then wait, we, we have to give him a better connection. We have, I'm sure we have a, a better connection so far. So um, maybe I also can introduce Ms. Katarina Simbeck. Um, maybe she has got the option 
to talk a little bit about um, while we are waiting for Mr. Sieg because Ms. Simberg came together with uh, Mr. Sieg from, from Munich. Uh, Ms. Simberg, can you talk? Is your mic? Yep, my, my okay. mic is working. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks for having us here. I'm also a professor at uh, HTW Berlin. I am um, in, in the program of business informatics and we are here in Bintu currently uh, to visit NAST uh, and also uh, Goethe Institute. So thank you for having us here. Um, we will uh, actually, I will give a presentation on Monday and uh, I will be talking about women in STEM and what we can do to get more girls and women interested in computer science. So this will be the topic I will be talking about on Monday. That Apart sounds very interesting. And, and I can see um, on the presentation now, apart from Mr. Sieg, it's only women, you, Sophie, Elizabeth, uh, it seems to work, uh, women <laughs> and men. Yes, yeah, sometimes it works, yeah, not all sometimes. the time. <laughs> So then we can maybe ask, um, check if Mr. Sieg is or Elizabeth are ready again. I just heard while you uh, uh, said while you were offline to give you for the next event a better connection. We do have better connections. Yeah. Um, we will sort this out. That if we, we move to another room and it, it seems that the quality of the Wi-Fi is now better. So let's continue mm. with Elizabeth. Yes, okay. Sorry, guys, I hope it will work now. Uh, yeah, the next slide is just how it looks. Um, so this is how it looks in Unity. For AR development, we use Unity. And you will see some, of, some more of this on our talk next Thursday, where we try to uh, augment a Namibian children's book together. But for now, I will show you a short video of how the application looks in real life. So on the left, you already see a short preview. You see uh, the markers with the musicians on them on the iPad. And now we will try to play a video. I hope it works. So you can see it live. Detlef, are you able to listen? Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, but uh, maybe you can explain that this, 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 these are the cards. We can't see the card itself. Of the Namibia University of Science and Technology. And yeah, in that um, time, we try to develop some applications in coding weeks together with Germans and Namibians students from the University of Applied Science and Berlin and students of NAST. So on the first one was the animal tracking for tourists in the Etosha National Park. One year later, 2017, was the coding week uh, with Namibian, Finnish and German students. And that was marketing of Namibian companies with AR. So that means augmented reality is not only for music and museums, it's also for companies, it's also for tourism, it's also for cities to promote the products, the city, the lodges, uh, the nice environment of Namibia and so on. So that continues to 2018, marketing for lodges in Namibia, uh, student states stayed at lodges and developed there some nice application about the Onyala Lodge, the Corona Guest Farm, uh, the Crystal uh, Wine Yard and so on. And in 2019, we had a cooperation with the Goethe Institute and we produced some augmentation of Namibian children's book. And 2020, was again a Kohlmannskorb tour, uh, some books, a Windhoek tour, and so on. Let me show some of the application. 
Let's start in 2017 with the digital marketing with flyers from Namibia Wildlife Resort. So the idea was, and you see here a picture uh, from the development process, to, was to bring to the flyers of uh, Namibia Wildlife Resort some live. Play a video, play an animation, and so on. So let's have a look to that. For example, here uh, on the left hand side, top left, uh, show a video, a marketing video about the lodges. On the right hand side, there is an 3D animations of an elephant, uh, of a spider, of a butterfly, and so on. And the, one of the nicest application was the animal race. Again, show the picture or one page of the little marketing book of Namibia Wildlife Resort and uh, have an animal race. And then test who is faster, the animal or the reno. And you see in that uh, special race, the elephant was faster than the reno. But I know there's a trick. And whenever you want to gamble with me, I'm sure until you do not know my trick, I will always be the winner. So, or um, some art in Namibia, uh, the Himma bracelets. So that means there are some bracelets and we as European, we as tourists, we do not really know what is the symbol of that pattern. So, is it possible to provide some information what is going on with the bracelets, what is the meaning, when uh, did you wear it, and so on. So you see first, you need uh, an image recognition of such a bracelet, and then you have a little description on your smartphone, and then a nice uh, Himba lady is uh, coming as a 3D model on top on the bracelet and do a description, an aura description uh, about that bracelet and the meaning and when you have to wear it and when not. So the next one uh, was one of my uh, very favorite project because it was the first uh, book for kids. We tried to do an augmentation. So Helvi Wheeler uh, wrote the book, um, The Bad Monster Kishi Kishi. So, and we want again, bring life to the book so that it is possible uh, to read with the help of the uh, smartphone or tablet and some interaction and some really nice animations. So again, the idea, you have the physical book in the background, place your smartphone or tablet on top, and then the book starts to live. So you see it here in the development process, hold the Kishibichi book in front of the camera, and then the 3D, 2D model will appear, and you will have the shanks uh, to uh, listen to something and watch uh, some of that. You see it here in action. You see the book on the table and you see this 2D animation area on your smartphone. And of course, some kids together with uh, Helvi. Helvi is the uh, second left and the others are the, the students development that and the test group, the kids, and uh, they told us, yes, it's good, and that is not so good. And so it was a point of optimization uh, to have a better application. So uh, in 2018, we have an augmented recipe book that is from the Corona Guest Farm. Uh, I told you some of my students went to different uh, guest farms uh, to vineyards and so on and produce an augmented reality application of that 
what is very special uh, for that area. And the Corona Guest Farm, of course, have a nice uh, environment. Uh, you can relax there. There is Namibia pool, and they have very good food and drink. And give it as a memory with the tourist, and then they can show that, cook once again, invite some friends, and the friends should come uh, again to the Corona Guest Farm. You see it here. Um, that is Millipub together, I guess, uh, with roasted meat, maybe uh, kudu, maybe springbok. I do not know what it is exactly on the picture. So how to produce Millipub, how to produce whatever. And you see it here on the uh, lower area, how to bake bread or how to cook Millipub in the traditional way. So, and then of course we can go also to uh, living books. That was the first application here. Ah, by the way, uh, that book uh, you can also borrow from uh, the library here in, in Windhoek and in the Goethe Institute and read and uh, try to um, cook your own food like the guys from the uh, Corona guest farm are doing. So here, uh, the next book, that is uh, Mina and the Magic Baobab book. So again, that is a real book, and we would like to transfer that to a living book. So, and you see here, that was uh, Rendemptus from uh, Namibia, and uh, das war Meshek also from the Namibia University of Science and Technology. Uh, and uh, the German uh, was Andre uh, had working together with them. And of course, as scientists, they have to do first and really nice program, how to use it, what are the important parts. And uh, you see uh, that's for Android, install the application, um, uh, device uh, on top of the book, uh, dress the main character. So that means Mina can uh, via uh, sneakers or the sh shoes from mom uh, have a base cap or um, other things on top and so on. So, and then you see that is a, on the left hand side on is an animation. Uh, then there is a game, for example, collecting. Uh, the different uh, fruits or uh, Mina uh, and uh, change the hat, change the language and in the action too, that is have some additional cards. Uh, for example, Mr. Milly, uh, you can see. So that means again in action, you see um, the book in the background and uh, in the foreground, you have uh, Mina with her uh, shoes, with the hat, you can select German or English. So here again, German, English, shoes, base cap or whatever. I guess here has uh, Mina uh, a straw hat and here Mina has the base cap, blue shoes, red shoes and so on. So you can integrate Mr. Millipap, for example, uh, and then uh, you can uh, change the story. Uh, so that means if you, you place the extra card, uh, then it's able to collect the fruits, then, it's, then you are able to earn more fruits and so on. So I guess the, the idea, and now uh, we go uh, to the Kalahari area, to the Sun Hunters, but that was a project Elizabeth did together with some Namibian students, and again, Elizabeth, it's your part. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this was during the 2019 coding week here at Goethe as well. Um, yeah, the book is The Dancing Tortoise and the Sun Hunters of the Kalahari by Omar Franz. And um, we tried to bring this book to life, just like the other groups. Here are some screenshots of what we did. In the very left, you can see that we um, enabled users to choose a language because the book is written in English, but uh, to have it in some other languages like Oshivambo, Portuguese or German would be preferable. 
we included Portuguese and German because our group uh, had those languages. So we had someone who was able to speak Oshiwambo, so one who was able to speak Portuguese, and me who was able to speak German. So we wanted to include those languages. So by choosing one of those, the content of the book changes for the user. And um, in the second screenshot, you can see we also included a pronunciation guide because the languages are not that um, easy to understand for tourists, especially the click sounds. So the first page, uh, you can uh, enable some audio source that, sources that tells you, or rather you can listen to how it's correctly pronounced in uh, Oshivambo language. Yeah, in the third screenshot, you can see that whenever you scan a page, there is a small augmentation and um, the language at the bottom changes. And also the, for example, the hand is moving in this picture from the chief of the village. So we included some small uh, animations in order to make the book more lively. Um, I included some videos of this. I hope it will be fine <laughs> with those internet, I'm not sure how reliable it is. So yeah, if you start the application, you have the language and we chose Oshivambo. And let me put up the value. So you can see that now the book is read to us in Oshivambo language, even though it's only English. And you can also see the small uh, animation. So this means that um, the book can be um, yeah, understood in more languages than originally, which was very nice for users. And over here is another. And what we also did, you can see in the top left, there is a little button. And if you press this button, you can play a game while the book is ready. So for example, this is a little memory game. And uh, yeah, you can have fun while enjoying the book. Yeah, um, more or less uh, the same strategy. As a professor, I have the task to teach the students to produce their own application, to produce augmented reality, to produce digital applications uh, by themselves. And then we have, uh, for example, uh, the Benny book. Uh, we have uh, different uh, things, Benny the Little Wilderbeast, and uh, you have some oh, animations oh, about that. Oh, I guess it's more or less the same. Um, that's Erich yeah, Bodenschweig yeah, talking yeah. about that. Uh, I guess you catch the idea. So now coming back to 2020, that was last year, just before the pandemic regulations. And we had four example and, uh, to the ghost town Kolmans Group. And that was the project uh, Sophie was involved together with some Namibian students, and of course, one student from Humboldt University. Uh, Sophie, please uh, show us and tell us what you did during the coding week. That means five days. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, last year we, uh, um, we traveled, I think we were um, two students from the HDW, uh, then also two students from the um, HU, from the Humboldt University, who studied um, cultural science, and then also two students from Namibia. And we traveled to uh, Lüderitz and close it is Komanskop, and we visited um, Komanskop. Uh, yeah, I think we were there twice. And um, there was uh, one or there were several rooms where was, which were still um, like uh, they were renovated. And for example, we had uh, we visited the ballroom um, and there were different kind of uh, sporting equipment in there. And we decided to uh, rebuild this room in, um, in, the, in Unity and uh, to have a um, virtual reality tour in this room. And um, here in this picture, you can see the ballroom in Kohlmannskop. 
And um, we used uh, photogrammetry uh, for, um, well, for like for the uh, sporting equipment, which means we took a um, hundred pictures from all angles uh, of the equipment. And then we used a um, computer program, which uh, stitched all pictures together. And then we had um, the 3D models in the end. And um, so here you can see the, uh, the digitalized uh, ballroom, which we developed then in Unity. So um, these, uh, yeah, the equipment, it's not perfect, but uh, it was very difficult for us to take the pictures because um, we didn't have like uh, the proper equipment. So we had to take a lot of pictures with a, um, with a really good camera and also with our uh, smartphones. And, uh, but I think we, uh, we managed to, um, to make it uh, pretty realistic. And um, then not only we had uh, the digitalized room, but we also um, created some content. So, um, so there are different points in the, um, in the ballroom, which you can teleport to. And then you will hear um, different uh, stories about the history of Hohmannskop. And um, there were, I think, four uh, like stations in total. And um, at these uh, stations, there were yeah different background stories. And um, we used uh, the in in Unity. There's um, a uh, the timeline uh, action where you can see um, the yeah sound file where we talked about uh, the history and then different um, picture frames uh, of yeah I think different uh, for example the the person who uh, who found the first diamond uh, and also other pictures were shown um, at the different stations. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a um, demo of our, uh, of our virtual tour, uh, but we came up with something pretty nice, I think. And um, yeah. Okay, thank you, Sophie. So you see, we are now in 2020, that was last year, Corona was coming and some of the activities being in groups, being together in one room is more than difficult. And that's why, uh, we had a lot of um, activities in 2016 to 2020. Uh, in 21, we were not able to run the real coding week. You know why. And we hope that we can do that in uh, 2022 again. But because we like the idea to collaborate, that's why uh, we try to uh, have a hackathon. We try to have an introduction how to produce your own augmented reality application in one day. We will have an hackathon on uh, November the 5th at 9 Uhr in uh, Zoom. And you see uh, the, the web link and I hope we will see us again on Thursday in Zoom. And then we will show you uh, how to produce such uh, nice applications in uh, a few steps. So lesson learned is augmented reality, digitalization of culture is a nice job. You can do that by yourself if you try to uh, deal with that. If you study computer science, if you have a computer scientist in one group, perhaps also a designer and a content provider, and then it's easy. It's not necessary that only uh, Google and Apple and Facebook is doing that. We can do uh, that by ourselves, take care for our culture, take care for our art, take care for our country and we provide the information 
of our culture. You in Namibia, we in Germany, we together in Germany and Namibia. Thanks a lot. And I hope there are a lot of questions. Sophie, Elizabeth, and I would like to answer. Thank you very much, Master Seek. You can um, if this, you can close the screen, the, the screen sharing. Um, I think that was very enlightening and very interesting. Um, I uh, give now the floor for if yeah for Q and A sessions. Uh, if you have a question or if you would like to add and comment, you can please raise your hand. And then I give you the, the floor. Um, but first of all, I, I, have an, I have a question when I, I was very impressed when I saw, for example, the, um, the, the augmented reality with the presence of the Himba women. Um, and my question is, um, actually, yeah, it, I, first of all, I didn't know about or that that the, the, the signs have different meanings and when to where and not. Um, my question is, how did you get the information? Did you ask in English? Could you communicate with the Himba girl in English? And have you maybe uh, did did you uh, remember one of the uh, one of the meanings of the bracelets. Uh, sorry, that left. Um, I have not an idea, uh, or I'm not an expert in meaning of Himba bracelets. And um, at the beginning, I told you it's important to collaborate. It's not only a collaboration between disciplines, it's also collaboration uh, between uh, international staff members. And good for us, we had at the Namibia University of Science and Technology in the Faculty of Computing, we had some people able to communicate in the Himba language, also in the Herero language, and of course in English. So that means we went together with them or one of the students went together with them uh, to, to the Himba market uh, next to the Hilton Hotel. You know where it is. And then we interviewed one of them. And of course we did buy some of the Himba bracelets. So, and sorry, I have to look uh, to the application, then I have an idea again uh, what it is, but nevertheless, the Himba bracelets are really nice. Some of the tourists uh, like that, and the Himba were really happy uh, to tell the stories about the different uh, patterns, about uh, the different things, and they were much more happy at that we did buy some of the Himba bracelets at the end. Detlef, you have to switch on the camera, uh, the, the microphone. So, yes, thank you. But luckily, the camera was switched on that you saw. I tried to talk to you. Um, so, can I add another question? Um, I, I would like to know um, how can we make this information about uh, the different meaning of the bracelets or that what you find out uh, to a wider public is there any do you have any idea this is now on the app but not everybody has the app but you have the information is the any possibility um, to conserve this information for a wider public or what is have you got an um, idea that left that is a very interesting question, but very hard to answer. Because that is a coding week, we had only five days. And the first half day is just an introduction, what are the different topics, build the different groups and the last half day, 
is the public presentation about the results of the of the, the group. So that means in reality, we had only four days for all the collection of information, for all the digitalization, uh, audio, video, animation, then also the programming. And that is good enough to have a proof of concept. It is good enough to have a little tiny prototype and it works in, in a lab, but not on every place with every uh, smartphone on the world. So, because the main focus for me, teach the student that they are able to produce that. And then there is an additional step to make a real product out of that and sell it maybe for free to the customers, to the people in the country, to the tourists coming to the country. And that is an additional month at least. And we do not have so much time at the university to do that because that are computer scientists. And at the end, yeah. we need some marketing guys. We need some business guys to have a business model for a little company for that. But that is not the task of a computer scientist, yeah. the teacher of computer science. So maybe that is um, also one of the subjects that can be touched in our next um, in our next talk. We we start in five minutes, the digitalization of culture panel discussion uh, mm -hmm. with Professor Sieg, with Patrick Sam, with um, Hamotenia Namuala. And that's why I would like to thank you all very much for that, what uh, you've shown. And um, I um, would like you to, yeah, to thanks. And uh, also for those who uh, joined us for the meeting. If you want to um, join us for the panel discussion, please go on our website www.goethe.de slash Namibia and check on uh, digitalization of culture um, and you can register from there straight to our Zoom meeting. We start in four minutes. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much for uh, sharing your knowledge and thank you very much for joining in. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.